My name is Veronica. I'm going to tell you the most disturbing Thanksgiving that I ever had been went through. And it all took place a few years ago when me, my husband Thomas, were invited to see my parents for Thanksgiving this year. And both of us was actually very excited since we both had a day off for a few days from our jobs. So it took us about two hours driving since we live in a different city from them. But for the past few years, though, we always have been invited there, or we invited them to our house. But when we showed up, it was already around 4 p.m., which is already dark. But when we, when we opened, when my mom opened the door, she let us in, and we gave each other hugs. But in the living room, I did notice there were not only four plates on the table, actually five. I asked my mom about she told me that they had actually invited a different another guest. And who couldn't have been since there didn't work no other since we all but they had other relatives in town or in the state that over. But my mom told me it was actually a neighbor, Daniel. And I remember Daniel. He was an older man who lives next door with my parents in his fifties. And I asked my mom why they invited him. Turns out his wife had passed away that summer and he had been feeling lonely and my parents felt a little bit a little bit sad for him, so they decided to invite him. And I am I was actually not surprised because Daniel were actually around my parents' age, so and he was actually in the kitchen with my dad preparing some of the last food and just conversation. And when we walked in, he's like, My God, Veronica, you look very beautiful as always. I thanked him for the compliment, the compliment and we had a very, very pleased conversation. But when my dad and my brother and my husband left to the kitchen to do something, it was just me and Tom, Daniel in the kitchen. He started to approach me and said, you know, ever since my wife passed away, I have been feeling very lonely. And uh, since you're a such beautiful young woman, you know, if it wasn't for your husband, I would have definitely had, had asked you out on a romantic date. I felt a little bit disturbed about this, this sentence myself. But I brushed it off. It's nothing that he just tried to be polite and tried to be as, well, as he usually is. But soon my dad told me, told us that dinner was ready, and during dinner, he wasn't like us before. He was actually very polite, very pleasant, he told some jokes about him. He told us what he had been doing for the past few months, ever since his wife passed away. I even asked him how his wife passed away. I remember his wife was very polite, very generous, young and older woman, in his, also in her 50s. Turns out that she had died from a stroke in her night when he was out for with a couple of friends. I was devastated because Daniel's wife was very, very sweet older woman. She was like a grandmother type. She was all well loved by everyone in the community or especially in the neighborhood. But after dinner, we just sitting there, just having another conversation about what we have been up to since me and my husband have been living in a different city. Daniel even asked us how, how it's like to be living in our town, or what our occupation are doing, or if we are planning to have any kids together. Uh, then, and my husband Thomas, he's like, yeah, we have been talking about having some children at some time, but, you know, work takes all the time. Daniel just laughed and said, yeah, you know, I remember when I was in your age. Me and my wife, we were... We had a lot of fun, but we were we were blessed to have at least our children. But you should probably start doing it soon because at some point you were probably well past the, the limit of age of to have any children. Thomas actually said that yeah, we are thinking about it. And when Daniel, which is sitting by the table just with myself and and my mom, and they just had a conversation while I was sitting there having some coffee for myself. But suddenly, my mom went to leave the kitchen to the kitchen to help my dad and Tom Thomas with the dishes. 
Daniel sat there and he started to started to move a little bit closer and whisper, you know, we can always leave the house and, you know, go somewhere, you know, just leave your husband here for a little bit and maybe do something together. I was really starting feeling creeped out. Not only because of that statement itself alone. I was starting feeling very creeped out because of that. He knew I was happily married. And I understand that he felt lonely about it since his wife's passed away, but doesn't even give him the right to start to hitting on his neighbor's married daughter. And I still mention that to him, I'm sorry, Daniel, but I'm married, and I'm not looking for any other man to screwing around with. But he brushed, he brushed it off and said, You don't have to tell your husband to find out, do you? But I told him, Look, I love my husband, and I'm not going to do anything like that, anything. But he just still also brushed it off, and then he put his hand on my lap and said, You know, I am very much lucky to have have neighbors, to have this amazing, good-looking daughter. So, what do, you, what, so what do you say? You and I are going out today, on a date tomorrow. But I told him once again and put off his hand from my lap and said, Said, I told you, Daniel, I'm not looking for anything other than I, with my own husband. But then you start to be a little bit angry. What, what does he have that I don't have? Said he almost like angrily. My dad walked in and said, Is something matter what's happening here? I tried to tell him that was, but then Daniel said, oh, No, no, nothing, but we are just an argument. Ah, okay. Then my dad left. I was about to say exactly, Don't you dare tell your dad about this. Because it, he won't even believe you. I was like, how can he say that? How would he even know that my dad would not believe me over his own daughter against his own neighbor? But I told him, okay, fine, I won't. But instead, I just stood up, just said, I probably had to leave this, I had to get some more coffee. And I walked in the kitchen, and I w walked up to my dad and whispered to him what Daniel said. And my dad was at first didn't believe me, but he looked at my face and saw I was quite serious. And he made to believe me, because I had never made any such fuss of any such things before. And he put down the dishes and just said, I will write back. But then my dad left the kitchen and went to the living room to have a conversation with Daniel, even though I knew that he would do. But suddenly we heard him screaming at Daniel and said, How dare you! Try to hit on my daughter! I couldn't try to believe you, Daniel. I can stand your wife pass away, but doesn't even give you the right to hit on my daughter. But Daniel tried to make excuse say that I was the one hitting on him and was on the other right the separate reverse role. He tried to act as a victim, but my dad didn't even believe a single word of Daniel, and he said, Leave! And don't talk to any of us. And the neighborhood will find out who you kind of person you are. And then sure enough, after that, Daniel just walked up, didn't say any other single word, and left. And in fact, a couple of days after the Thanksgiving, when after me and my, my husband had returned home, my dad gave me a call, told me that Daniel had been very much been an outcast of the whole neighborhood. Because they have heard they, my family have been very much polite, very welcomed in the family, always very much accepted here. But after most of the people in the neighborhood heard what my our neighbor Daniel did, they were they were really disturbed. Because how would he even do that? Understanding about his wife had passed away, but trying to hit on their his own neighbor's married young daughter makes nothing giving him the right and try to play the victim again. But the neighborhood then start to ignore him. They didn't start to have nothing to do with him. And the last time I heard, Daniel moved out from the neighborhood it was probably for the best because he was making me feel very uncomfortable that Thanksgiving. And even at the stand, my parents we just want to be polite and invite him after his wife passed away. But Daniel, let's not meet ever again. Thank you. Hey, my name is Kaden. 
This happened around a couple years ago, around Thanksgiving holiday. My mom had had asked me if I could, could go to the store and buy some of the last things for our Thanksgiving dinner food. And since I didn't have any other plans, and my husband was at home, but was there taking care of my ch our children, so I thought, why not? There was only the since the Walmart was the closest, so I went there. And I was actually not expecting much people at the Walmart since during this particular holiday. But when I arrived, I did see there was a quite a decent enough cars, and when I walked in, I was really surprised, but at least a decent enough people there, and I assume it probably was the last shopping shoppers for the Thanksgiving that they also was there to looking for some things that probably for dinner or probably other other, other items. But my mom actually had given me a list of things that I needed. But since I realized since I wasn't having been in this Walmart in a quite some time, they had changed a lot of the layout. So I had a little difficult time to find some of the items that was needed. Some of the things that were usually were either in almost in front of the store, but it turns out some of the others had been moved either to the midsection of the store or maybe even further down the end of the by the end far end. But I walked running to one of the workers and it turns out he was an old friend of mine from high school, but named Carlos. We shared a small little bit, and he told me where to find some of the things, and he asked me if I needed any more help, and said, I think I can handle this from my own. And he said, if you just need any help, just go to find him, or maybe find out one of his co-workers. I thanked him for his help, and was talking around. But as I was looking around for some of the last items on the list, I saw this man probably in his early 30s walking around but he saw this we looked at chat for only color, just for like five seconds and apparently that was long enough for him to bring me approach me he started to flirt with me in like you know like in the lines of hey gorgeous do you need any help uh i told him i, I needed an, i didn't need any particular help i was just looking for one of, only for a few more items but he ignored my, my answer and just said, Well, a good looking young woman like you probably need a very much smart man to help you. Let me help you though. And then tried to grab the list from my hand, but I said, But I snatched it from his hand back and said, I don't need your help. I need only a few things and I need, and I know what they are. So please leave me alone. I don't need your help. But, and he's tried to once again, But come on, I just. I just wanted to help you. I mean, a gorgeous young woman like you. Please, I'm married. I told him. But he brushed it off and then he just ignored my statement. And as I was about to leave, he then once again, But come on, I'm just a very nice guy. I just want to, to, to help you. But I just ignored him and just walked away. And I first probably thought that was the last thing I would ever see him again. But when I, when I was in a different aisle, Looking around for this, one of the last things I needed, but it turns out I was in the wrong aisle. But as I was about to walk away, I walked into someone. As I said, I pulled guys, but it turns out I walked into the same man once again. And it says like, oh, <laughs> must be fate. He smiled and almost like a grin. Hey, why don't you let me help you? And after this, we can go out on a date. How about that? But I told him once again, I'm married and I'm not looking for any other man to be with. As I tried to walk around him, he grabbed by my arm and said, Please, I just wanted to ask you out. Isn't that really hard to understand? I just think you are very attractive. I just want to go out with you. Please, give me a chance. I'm a nice guy. But I told him once again, No, I'm married. And I tried to match the Gretel out of his grip and try to almost walk, speed walking, but he kept walking after me and almost like, Please, I'm a nice guy. Come on, give me a chance at least. He started shouting. And he tried to act like he, if we knew each other. A worker approached and asked if something was wrong. And he, before I can even say anything, he said, oh, I'm sorry, me and my wife are, uh, we have a little bit heating discussions here. And the worker was about, was about to ask me the same thing, but I said, where I was about to walk away, when I said, I don't even know this man. 
He has been following me around for the past few minutes, and he even won't leave me alone. The worker actually noticed that I was telling the truth. But this man tried to act like I was wrong and that he was the right one. But I said, I, I don't even know this man, and I'm married already, and he tried to hit on me. And as that man tried to say, the worker tried to say something like, Listen, if you don't know this man, this young woman, leave her alone and get your own business. But the, but the man brushed him off and even ignored, ignored the worker and said, Honey, please, let's just start fighting and go out after this. Have a drink or something. But I just ignored him. But this man just tried to walk after me, almost running. Hey, hey, listen to me. I just trying to talk to be nice to you. But then suddenly, someone actually said, Please call for 911. And it was actually Carlos. He overheard this conversation and this commotion is what happened. But Daniel, like Carlos, did notice something was wrong with this guy. He tried to turn around. But then suddenly, Carlos tried to grab him and tried to prevent him from leaving. But as the man tried to tried to grip out of this grip. But as that happened, the, the man tried to use pocket knife against Carlos. But Carlos punched him right inside of his head and made the man fall down and was dizzy. He was disorientated enough. So Carlos and, the, and his co-worker jumped on him and managed to keep him down as long enough as the police actually was called and arrived in time. They handcuffed the man and they asked him what he was doing. And he tried once again to explain that I was his wife and we had this heated argument over some stupid thing. But when they asked my side of the story, I told them, I don't even know this man. He has been keep following around. He has been stalking me around his store. I'm just here for looking for just any food that for my family asked me to do. And I didn't know her. And he's standing up trying to attack my friend. And then she pointed at Carlos. And also pointed out the knife on the floor. That wasn't enough for the police to arrest this man. They thanked me. And it turns out this man was. Um, very soon high on drugs. That was the case why he was acting like this. And he was immediately taken for, to, to jail for quite some time. When I get home. I was very much shaken up. My my. My husband and my mom and my dad asked me what happened. I explained, and they were first, they didn't believe me. But my husband and then asked exactly what happened. I told them once again, and but then they realized I wasn't making it up because they saw I was very shaking and was almost crying because I had never lied of anything like this. And I, and even after the even after the Thanksgiving, I get a follow-up call from the police and tell me that this man was had been a warrant for his attacking other people in the past. And the police then, for my parents, bullied my story even more. That was by the most disturbing and also the most creepiest Thanksgiving in my life. And even though I don't know the man's name, which I really don't want to know, but if I would ever encounter him, please, I don't want to see you. And I'm once again, I'm married, happily married. So once again, please, don't let us meet ever again.